Welcome to the Strategic Project Leader, where we help you leverage strategic project management so you can achieve your goals. Now, here's your host, Ola Alibi. Good morning and welcome. We are coming at you live from Calgary, Alberta today. How is everyone doing? I want to see you in the comments. Let me know where you're joining us from. Everyone has already been here. And yes, as you know, at times to say whatever can go wrong will definitely go wrong. But because we are not just project managers, but we're project leaders, we get it fixed. And we dealt with this. I'm super excited this morning because, as you know, on the Strategic Project Leader, we help you, aspiring PMs, business leaders, become strategic leaders who achieve strategic goals and objectives, drive organizational growth, and above all, create the life you've always craved. Jerry Meyer, I can already see you in the chat. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's going to be special and different because I've got two extraordinary people joining me today, and they're going to come and tell you a bit about themselves as we get into a topic that is really dear to my heart because we're going to be talking about a key challenge that a lot of us go through. We've been through it. We're currently going through it now. And you may not really be sure as to how you can overcome it. These leaders are seasoned. They've done projects. They've managed people. They've seen different sides of the coin. And I'm going to be bringing them one at a time as they're going to be sharing the experience. Thank you so much, um, Caroline, for joining us. Let us know where you're joining. Oh, I can see someone joining us from Syria. Um, it's definitely great to have you here as well. So first off, as we get into today's topic, I want to bring up a seasoned leader. She's also a leader in the PMI world. I have Priya. Priya, Patra, how are you doing today? Can you just tell us a little bit about you and where you're joining us from today? Well, I'm doing great, Fulan. Thanks for inviting me. I'm so excited to have this chat. Uh, I'm joining in from Mumbai, India, and it's about uh, 8.30 p.m. IST, almost time to go to, you know, wrap up my weekend. One day is already gone and go to sleep. Fantastic. We have Priya joining us all the way from Bai from India. And you don't want to know, I have got this one. He has to give us double of this juices because he was meant to have been here last week. I have no other than Derek Bruno. Derek, how are you doing this morning? Very good. Very good. Thank you so much for, for having me. Uh, Derek Brown now all the way from Phoenix, Arizona, where it's uh, around 8 a.m. So uh, starting my weekend early with with Fola and Priya to talk about cultural intelligence. Very excited to be here. Fantastic. As you just had that, he's all the way in Phoenix, Arizona. I told you, we definitely not just need to just talk about this. We need to physically do it as well in Phoenix very soon. So for everyone who's actually joining us, we want to get into a key topic that has to do with everyone as leaders be you an individual contributor, be you even a business manager, at some point in your career, you've always had someone you've all had to report to, you've had a team. And we want to get into how exactly can we ensure that we can win over, first off, our bosses. We're going we're gonna to dive into cultural intelligence, but before we start about cultural intelligence, I want us to think about this. Everyone has got a leader. Everyone has got a manager. However, there's a fundamental piece that has to do with getting things done. You could be the best at it, but Priya, how exactly can we get into a role and pretty much wean the hearts of our boss right off the bat? Yeah. Over to you. So interestingly, Fola, and I was uh, doing some reading on this topic and I could correlate to what I've been facing, right? It's about leading from where you are, it says, right? The influential project manager, which means you have to lead upwards, downwards, the, even lead your peers in many cases. So how do you lead your boss? You know, you align to the goals and the strategies that your boss is, is aligned to. That means your boss has some KPIs. So in order to manage your boss, you have to ensure that he is successful. He or she is successful. Sorry, I shouldn't have used the word he. Uh, so that's my strategy. 
ensure your leaders are successful. How do you do that? Align to the KPIs that they have and make them your own. Fantastic. I love the intro into that piece. And, you know, as we know, there's no, you know, fluff here on the Strategic Project Leader podcast. We dive deep and we tell you the real thing. Priya said something really interesting. She just said, align to the goals of your boss. That's critical. Derek, I need you to dive into this. As you know, I always tell people, I say, everyone has their agenda. Do you know that? Even as, your, as, as, as a, a, an individual contributor, even your manager, they have their goals. Do we even know what the agenda of your manager actually is? Derek, how can we uncover the agenda of our leaders so we can fully align? I'm, I'm really glad you asked that question. Um, one of the things that I've, I've taken with me in my career is a, a coaching attitude and a coaching culture. As you start to look at your where you are, and, and Priya talked about where you are, what kind of questions can you ask, right, as the project leader or as the project manager? What kind of questions can you ask to uncover what the true culture is? So many companies, right, and you can get the KPIs really easily by asking, right, asking what are what what is important, but what are the core values of the organization? Do they match with the core values of the leader? And do they match with your core values? So as you come into a situation, right, where you're going to lead, what types of questions you ask are going to be really important in how you align with that leader? You're talking about questions and asking questions and communication. We're going to get into that as well. I just saw all Ken joining us as well. Asking questions is critical. You need to understand what's the agenda. You need to understand organization goals and objectives. We need to uncover that. So when we think about a role you've been brought into, where you've asked questions, you've tried to kind of do like the James Bond thing, right? You want to know what's really going on. I think my, my, my boss wants to um, get organizations to maybe in, impact on the ROI or whatever, but you feel that it's something really maybe slimy going on. You're really not sure because we all don't have the perfect boss. You could have the perfect job. You could work for the perfect organization. But today we really want to dive into that boss that really isn't so favorable. So Priya, we have a PM here who is struggling. They have a boss who just doesn't get it. I don't know if it's a cultural thing. We don't know if it's an organizational thing. Today, we want to give them solutions. Priya, where exactly is this project manager going to start? Yeah, so I liked what Derek said, and that uh, takes me back to a book that I read on uh, Michael by Michael B Wagner, and he gives a framework of questions. Yes, asking questions. Now, you cannot keep on asking questions because your boss may not like it. But subtly try to understand what he is looking for, he or she is looking for. I'm sorry, I keep saying he, but my boss is a she, yeah? so just to make it clear, uh, what he or she is looking for. And uh, if I have seen if we follow the framework of question, you know, um, you can uncover most of the things right what they are seeking or what are their goals uh, fortunately where i work uh, there is a visioning workshop that happens in the beginning of the year and we have some strategic you know priorities which have been said usually we align to that so we all know what are our kpis uh, the, our leaders have and what it boils down to uh, so uh, uh, we, uh, we we somehow know what we are uh, we we have to achieve in this year right and that's how uh, uh, you know uh, and we have periodic checks uh, with our managers and with that i think we are able to navigate that difficult boss that you are talking about well, first of all we know what our priorities are second of all we do a periodic check and third is always ask the right questions to deep dive and trying to find out what else. And I think Michael Bagner says the all question and what else. So when you ask and what else, it's a coaching question, of course, uh, you get, you can definitely go to the root of uh, what he or she is seeking. 
get into the roots of what he or she's seeking. I love that. I love, I call this mindful leadership. So when you pretty much get into a role and you have a leader, you, you, know, you want to ensure that you practice mindful leadership, where you're actually fostering a culture of collaboration, open communication. You want to encourage your boss um, to be one that can actually be open. And you know what that means? It means that they have to trust you. And building trust is one piece that it seems so easy, but I think it's also yet so difficult. And building trust can also tie back to culture. I know we're going to dive into cultural intelligence very soon because when you're working, especially with global organizations, people have got you know different backgrounds, they, they address and approach things differently. And you need to understand the right approach and the way your boss actually wants to receive information. You need to understand how they also want to um, have information delivered to them as well. And this now brings us to that, Derek. You, you know, you haven't worked for different organizations. You have, you know, you're setting up your own consulting firm. That's exciting. Now, we see, you know, we see coaching clients who want different things. How exactly can we ensure that when? we get into a space, how can we uncover, just like the James Bond piece, to get ready to know our leaders on a different level, beyond even work? Have you been able to do that? Yes, yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's above and beyond the KPIs. It's the personal core values and those questions that you ask that get to the core values. So for Priya, you know, if, if Priya was my, my leader or say somebody that I'm coaching, I would ask Priya, so Priya, for 2023 what are what's your vision what are the things that are most important to you right in 2023 now those things might be personal they might be uh business related or career related so say if priya says well for me i really really want to accomplish this large erp project right that's the most important thing so now we have awareness right we've created some awareness between each other that trust that you've talked about Fola, that 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 now they've trusted us right with that with that question and, and and now we have some trust so the next level is to talk about accountability how are you going to do that what types of things do you need priya to get that done right you start digging into who is accountable how do how do you as the project manager or as the leader how do you then find out what those challenges priya is going to have right so that gets into accountability once you know what Priya needs, right? You now dipped in, you know that she wants to get this ERP piece done. You know some timing, you've asked some questions about who, now you can start looking at performance. So you go from awareness to accountability to performance. You become a valuable asset to, to your leader, to, to Priya. So I then become that valuable asset and then I can start to actually optimize through performance, through actually performing tasks, performing, um, you know, creating awareness, right, for Priya, that that goal that she wants to attain can be attained, right? And that I'm the agent, right, that can make that happen. So from a coaching perspective, you know, asking those questions, what would it be? What would that challenge be? And how, how do you envision that challenge being solved? and allowing that question to be answered and you to be the person that helps support it. I love it. I know there's, there's one piece that I love so much and I'm gonna just share that pretty quickly. A friend of mine told me something many, many years ago. She's like, she went in for an interview and um, the interviewer asked, the hiring manager and said, asked her, said, okay, what exactly is your role gonna be in this organization? Listen to this clearly. She said, I wanna see your faces while I say this pretty close. She's like, my job here is to make you look good, period. Mm -hmm. I don't need a job description. My job is for you to be successful. Whatever is needed to be done, I'm it. And so everyone as project managers, everyone is, you know, business analyst, wherever it is that you sit within the organization, your job is really to make your partner, your, your leader look good. And so when you, he, start, he or she starts seeing you as that value add, as that asset, as, as you know, Derek has said it before, what exactly are your goals? How aligned are you? How, you know, how you tie back to, because even if anyone comes and says, what are you guys working on? I'm just going to go check back with them. 
Priya. I'm going to find out what Derek is actually saying. I think our goals are set to, you know, to align back to those customers objectives, but I really want to get back to you on that. When they find out that you become that advocate for them, they can go to bed and sleep at night. They know that all has got me. And so when there is a promotion, or when things need to happen, they're going to say, I've got my girl, you know, I, I want to put her forward because they're relaxed. The key that we need to get is, you know, we've gone through that, that awareness. Once you are connected and once you can actually build trust when, you know, once they understand that it doesn't matter what barriers are there, you are always there to listen. That way you can actually build trust. And now let's get into it again. So Priya, now we're thinking about the agendas of our marriage. So how, can, how does culture play into this? We're thinking about this that we are diverse. I've got a different background. Priya has got that. Derek has got a smoothie of it, just like me. You come into a space. How can we uncover all of this with cultural intelligence? Because culture, I feel, is so, so important. So I know you've just written a book as well, um, Priya. So get, give us some nuggets when it comes to... Um, CI. Yeah, of course. And uh, I have been fortunate. Um, apart from my work, please, I have been leading a volunteer team of, say, from uh, 20 nationalities. And they're like, it's a huge team of 42 people. And I'm referring to, you might have guessed it already, the PMI chapter exchange. And culture does play an important role. I knew nothing about culture, although I thought I knew because I work for an organization where my customers are in North America. But when I started working with this group of people, I realized I knew nothing. Okay, I just knew about the North American culture a bit. But then how does others work? That's what I started discovering. Okay, and uh, fortunately, uh, because we were all aligned to a common vision, again, the vision comes into place, it becomes a little easier. And I started doing a lot of reading on cultural intelligence and it started fascinating me. The more I read, the more I wanted to reach out to different cultures. So, for example, Africa also differs a lot from one country to another. Even, even in India, if you look at it, north of India has a little different culture than south of India. So it's, it's very different. It is very fascinating. And to gain that trust, you have to be culturally intelligent you have to have that emotional intelligence in place. Cultural intelligence and emotional intelligence are tied together because it's about working with people who are not like me, right? If I'm working with someone who is like me, I know. But how do you understand what the other person is thinking or reacting, how he or she is going to react when I say something? That's where that cultural intelligence play a part. And of course, you refer to the book and here's the book. And we call that as the exchange effect because it's about connecting with different diverse people and how that has created, that has helped us to create some innovative solutions. And it is, of course, has a compounding effect with one diverse connection at a time. Sure. I think that's great because understanding and being aware that everyone has got a different makeup. Even when it comes to our kids, for people who have got kids, right? Although they're from different, the same parents, they are all different. And then you think about people from a totally different culture. So when you come into an organization, you need to realize that your boss may have a different culture, the way they see things, the way they see life, the lens through which they imagine things is totally different. So you may just assume that everything is okay. You may just assume that they should just get it right. I'm doing, I've got my project documents, you know, I've met with my stakeholders, everything is fine. And why are they giving me so much stress? Why, you know, but the culture is different for them. They may want you to give an extra, you know, book a meeting and say, this is what's new. This was on the horizon, right? Or they may say, I just want you to send me a, a status report update every week or every month. The key there is sitting down to set expectations. I know we've touched on that because assumptions, my goodness. And I think it's almost the, the lowest level of knowledge because a lot of the time we just feel that this person should just understand, they should just get it. And I, I love that Felipe has actually mentioned that he's gonna be on the show pretty soon as well. My goodness, he's a leader when he talks about change and hiring and stuff. We're gonna be diving deep into that. He's got so much wisdom. A key about expectation 
this is a piece where we kind of just start drifting apart. You feel, I think I have my role and meant to be working on this. And guess what? Your boss thinks you're doing something else. The mm. team is doing something else and slowly becomes the wall of China, right? It gets higher and higher and higher. And then you're like, oh my goodness, it's a nightmare now. What am I going to do? I hit my job. I hit myself. But the thing is, only if you could have taken a little bit of time to say, what is this project about? What is my role? How can I help you be successful? That's the number one thing. And take notes. How exactly can you support me to get me there? Now I want to come to you, Derek. I know you're really great at this, uncovering this, working with like different types of people because you do that within your role as well. How can we really penetrate? Imagine now the situation is bad. You know, a PM never knew that they should do all of this. And now they're at a point where they're about to quit. They're like, I hate this. I hate my life now. How can they manage relationship? <laughs> what can they do to win their boss over now? Yeah, I think you have to be self-aware, right? So the self-awareness piece and, and, and really what I've, I've used is this model, right? In coaching Olympic development players and coaching executives is first and foremost, right? Where do I sit from a technical perspective? Do I understand what technical things, right, that I can do, right, that no one else can do, right? So I start to framework up, what are my technical capabilities? What are my tactical awareness? What is the tactical awareness that I have today? So tactical, a lot of Priya, what you talked about, and tactical is more of a military term, is where do I sit in the relationship of my career, right, with my, my peers, the people that I manage and my leaders. What is my tactical awareness? Where do I sit? Who is my ally? Who is not my ally? Who do I have to win over? How do I win them over? And you have to create a tactical plan. What's my energy, right? Fola, you have this wonderful energy, right? You win people over with your energy, with how you show up, right? And energy is really a component of four areas, physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. Right. So your energy, do you have an energy plan if you're showing up? Right. And you don't have the energy right to 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 influence, then you're not going to be able to reach that next step. And then finally, social cultural. So Priya mentioned with the with the chapter exchange, you're actually confronting cultural differences as a part of the of the exchange. Right. That the purpose of the exchange is to create this cultural awareness. Right automatically and sitting in phoenix arizona the culture in phoenix arizona is so different than the west coast i went to school at santa clara university in the bay area a very fast paced much different like very entrepreneurial you go to new york in new york city it's very similar but it's a different yeah. selling style right it's a different cultural style that you fit into so i think taking those four pillars together and that's kind of how we start to measure right where we are and where we stand and then continuously improve right those four pillars those four areas technical tactical energy and social and continue to to work those in in practice every day i think the key you you pulled that out within everything there has to be a plan right because a lot of the time we make assumptions and say i'm just great at my job you know what I mean? It's like, goodness, I've got all the skills. I am, you know, what's, listen, I can execute on my plan. I could sell, you know, whatever it is, send to the Arabs. It doesn't even matter. And so why shouldn't I get promoted? Hello? Smell the coffee beyond being great out of your job. There's so much more that comes with it. I remember reading an article many years ago where we spoke about even the high achievers, where you see them at work, they think they seem to get things done. But on the people side, they may just be so crappy and they're like, oh my goodness, I'm on that project again and I have to deal with this, this person. You're like, you keep praying every day, oh my goodness, when is he going to end? It's going to get to a point where people cannot just deal with you. Beyond your technical skill, beyond the business side, you also need to have, you know, the energy, you have to come with everything. And so people want to be around you. People know that you are the person who can actually help and support them. People know that you are a valuable resource that will always be there to support them no matter what. And so now I love, I love the breakdown, the tactical, and I love the military piece. I think I probably need to go gym as well after this, where we have the plan and we get into action. 
I think for me, Derek, and I'm going to go back to you. I know you spoke about that. Right now, we said the things are already bad. So the PM never knew they had to do all of this. And they're trying to fix this relationship because they are in their dream job. And now they want to see how can they wean their boss over? The energy has been bad and you know, everything has been lopsided, but now it's like fixing time. Before they throw in the towel, you have the cape, Derek, over to you. What exactly can they do now to save the scene? You have to really hone in and identify on the top challenge that your boss is facing. You really have to, to, to narrow in and sometimes and this is a good case, and this happens very often, is that the, the, the boss or the leader is the cultural drainer within your project and your program. And you have to have a critical conversation. I'll give you an example. There is a, a young lady that I was coaching and her social cultural awareness was that her boss was not showing up to meetings on time. So Fola, you know this about me, sometimes I'm running a little bit late, but the impact on the team, performance of the team, directly related to the boss, right? To the boss showing up late. And so because of that, right, her team was not performing. So I asked her, what do you think would happen if you spoke to the boss about this? How would that conversation go? And she said, well, I, I think that maybe if I laid it out, what the impact would be, maybe he would come to the meetings on time. And so in this particular case, in many cases, what she was doing is removing a roadblock of performance within the team by making the boss aware of their impact on the performance of the team. So my answer, Fola, is to find that thing that the boss is doing, right? And you hit on it early, find the thing that's gonna make the boss look good and that's going to accelerate the performance of the teams that you're leading and the experience of, of the group, right? Try to find what that is and remove that roadblock, right? And then you'll win that, win that opportunity. Fantastic, it's just like everyone, I'm gonna to come to you praying now as well. We spoke about winning people over. That is critical. And beyond just you showing your performance, we need to then show up and say, this is kind of how I need to make the team even be better. Priya, I want to get your germs, you, you want to do those great nuggets. When you had a very complex situation where things were going off the rail as well, how have you been able to like win like that leader over as well? So what else can we add? Because there are people here who are saying that, obviously I am going to do this. I'm going to help them, you know, remove that role, but, but what else can they do? to win a relationship that is pretty much on the other side at the verge of like catastrophe. Oh, I have been in these situations many times, of course, but uh, not that I have succeeded all the time, but in a couple okay. of instances I did. And uh, it's about, you know what, as uh, um, Derek said, right? We uh, become aware of your leader's culture what what is the challenge that he or she is facing right and of course try to find a middle ground okay and see that you know so i come 50 percent you come 50 percent and we shake hands in the middle that's that's the approach that i have used many a times sometimes it worked sometimes it did not but uh, that and it's not only with the leaders but also with your team members nowadays no one reports to you as such right and if they are not happy, they will leave and they will go. So that's not what we want. We want the team also to come together and be aligned. So even with team members, we use the same strategy. As I said, lead from wherever you are. Uh, I've been in initiatives where people don't directly report to me, but I have to make that happen. So even how do you influence your peers? So be aware of their culture, that is for sure. And be aware of your own culture, first of all. See what biases do you have, like certain things. And once you understand what biases you have, put yourself in the other person's shoe and see that, you know, how is that person feeling? And then try to find a middle ground. That's that's what I, I would try all the time and see. I mean, I would say 50% of the time we would succeed. 
I think I love that. And I want to know for people who are watching still here, I can see more people joining us as well. Let us know in the comments where you're joining us from and put a question that you definitely want answered. Yes, we're actually watching. We're bringing all of that in. Thank you so much. Appreciate everyone from being here this morning. For just a very, very quick segue, I love that when you spoke about, you know, people understanding the cultures, creating that win-win situation as well. But I think this is a perfect segue for... It's actually time for Project Lifestyle. Is everyone excited? On this particular segment of Project Lifestyle, I want us to talk about how exactly can we win over in a difficult situation, but now in our personal life. That's right. Today, I am going to be talking about what I call reverse mentoring. Because we talk about mentoring a lot. A lot of the time you go off and you say, oh, yes, I'm going to get a coach as awesome as Derek or Prayer or even Fola and say, I want to be mentored. But on this particular side of the wing, you want to mentor your boss. And how can you do that effectively? The same way even at home, you want to be able to mentor even your spouse, your partner, or people around you. This is a valuable strategy that can help you win over difficult situations, you know, help you foster mutual understanding, build trust, and promote positive energy and positive change. And I hope you're taking this. The first step is always assess the situation. As I said, the situation we're talking about now, when things are not really going the way you've definitely wanted before, you want to what? Assess the situation. You want to write things down. You want to say, what exactly is it that's happening? How exactly can I deal with this? Evaluate the challenges. Then you need to know exactly what needs to be improved. Is it communication? Is it interpersonal skills? Then you can go off and gain buy-in. Because when you know what the problem is, you can go off and say, okay, now I get it. I never knew that. Maybe I was a little bit forward. I probably never knew that. I was never really thinking about my boss this particular way. But now you can then get by and say, I raise my hand up and say, okay, this is exactly what's been happening. I didn't see things that way. How can we fix this? But one piece that's actually helped me as well over the years is the next step, number three, is to what? Identify mentors. When things are already bad, you want to identify people. Who can I talk to? Whose ears? Who's out there? Who has got my back? Who wants me to succeed as well? That I can go and share and say, guess what? This relationship isn't really going well. What can I do? How can I get guidance? How can I get support? Those people are like, goodness, they are going to propel you. They're going to help you. And even better, if you could get someone who's even really senior, who can also help support that in the workplace and they can help influence your boss. Think about that. Get those mentors and then you get the goals that you want to work with. And then with that, you're going to get some feedback and then you're going to have to foster open communication. Remember this comment? This this piece is about setting expectations. Prior to now, I want to believe that most of the time, communication may have been broken. As long as you've assessed it, you've tried to then get by, you're going to come back to your boss or even your partner and say, guess what? Maybe I wasn't really listening. You know, maybe I kind of thought that it had to be my way. But now I kind of see you because I know that I want to make this better. I want to communicate differently. What do you think? What's your goal? Because my goal is to make you look good. My goal is to ensure that we are successful as a team because in the workplace at home, it's a teamwork. It is, you know, when you, it's just like a marathon, right? Where you are passing the baton all the time. If I want to be the superhero and we don't do it together, we're still going to lose. The only time we'll win is when we both work together. And all through this process, look, there's a learning opportunity and keep learning. Go back lessons, learned. do it as a project manager. Go back and say, what's going well? What has worked? What can we do differently? And always just being able to say that I don't actually get it all the time. I also want to learn. I think just making sure that you see yourself as I'm a human. I could feel I make mistakes. I want to help. And if you need to apologize if something has gone wrong, do it. Once they see you as that person who will be there to offer help and support, believe it or not, it's a game changer. And now I want to get dive into test. What exactly do you think when it comes to this as a lifestyle now? Because we want to, we want to create a better life. Even our team members, we want to take that home. 
And now so Derek at home, how can we leverage this as well and create better relationships as yeah, well? I create this thing about that. I have, I have a little bit of a trick and, and it's something <laughs> that we experienced when we were in San Diego at the leadership uh, conference, right? For PMI is understanding your own personality style and understanding the personality style of the person that you're trying to connect with. So, so my wife is more introvert. She is an introvert. She enjoys the written word. If I write her a letter or write her a note, it's much, much more energizing for her than for me to have a really passionate conversation. I'm a high I, influential and dominant, right? And so my communication style is a little bit different. So knowing the communication style, and there's a, a little trick to this. There's actually a, a website called Crystal Nose. And what you can do is you can put in your information and they give you free personality tests, but you can, you can connect it to LinkedIn and it looks at your LinkedIn profile and it matches it with the LinkedIn profile of the person that you want to connect with. So you can see. Oh my goodness. Is it like dating now, Terry? <laughs> It's it is it's like dating, you know. You you, you want to know, right? What is the communication <laughs> style, and and am I communicating in the way that I like to communicate? But for Priya, that's not a great communication style for her, right? Even though I love it, it may not be the type of communication that rings true for her personality. And so, taking that step, that five minute step to go to Crystal Nose and to match up your personality styles. And it gives you some hints on how to communicate with that, that different personality style. I tend to work with a lot of high Ds when I'm on the sales side, people that are dominant architects, right? They're the buyers of the PMO solutions that we, that we offer and, and some of the executive coaching. And so for them, they want to get straight to the point. They want to get to the numbers. I like the relationship. I want to talk about the dogs and the cats and the family and all this. But they, because of their personality style, want to get down to numbers and timelines and things like that. And introverts, they prefer that you have a very small conversation, maybe not in it, on Zoom, maybe over the phone. And then you give them the information to read, right? Lots of volumes of articles and different things that they can absorb, right, on their own and come back to their with their own conclusions, right? So the personality styles, taking that time to go to Crystal Nose or go to the, the their LinkedIn profile and read about who they are and what they do will help you to create that real, true, meaningful connection. I know that's great. And just hint, hint for LinkedIn, all of them actually listened to me. They had said that before that this is another stream of revenue, but it could actually start like a, a dating site for professionals. Just a little bit out there, and I'm telling you, I'm like, we already have everybody out there, and they just make it like, you know, connect all those executives with you. Know, you kind of know that they're kind of real. And this is like another extra revenue. So just say, Fola said it. I've been talking about this for a while. But now down to prayer. You know, Derek has actually told us much of communication. I think it's, it's a consistent thread that is actually, you know, tied into everything we've been talking about. Because for you to make your boss look good, for you to make your spouse a little bit better, you need to understand what they want. The only way you can do that is by listening, communicating, right? Because you will never know, except you've got superpowers and I need some of that. And if anyone has it, please let me know in the comments where you can uncover things with superpowers. However, you need to talk. The only way I got to know Derek was when we had a conversation. I remember we did that in, in San Diego. And for a few minutes, it was like we knew each other forever. The same way with um, Priya. I want to know. What exactly are those final words that we could take you, especially in our personal life, that we could do, you know, to leverage this as well and create a better life for ourselves? And Fola, you have already answered that question. Listen, and which is very, very difficult for me because I always want to talk. So <laughs> that's definitely the thing that I would like to improve on. Listen more. Um, while Derek was talking about his wife, it reminded me of my children who are grown up now and they don't want to listen to me. How do you communicate effectively with them? And uh, what I try to do is that, you know, be try to be like them. Try to understand how they are thinking. Maybe that's that's the way. Then when they think that, oh, oh mama is it's like my friend then they open up and then they try to understand our viewpoint right 
And I think that's what I leverage in my personal life. Not much with my spouse, but more with my kids. Because uh, when they were young, I thought, oh, when will they grow up? And when they grew up, I said, oh, my God, it was better when they were young. So it's, it's again communication, but the way they want to hear, you know, the way they think, but driving your point home. My goodness, I think that's that's a very wonderful one. I say the key is we all wear shoes, right? We all wear shoes. However, we all have got different shoe sizes. The fact that you wear a shoe, we can assume that, okay, you know, it's, it's a shoe. Understand that everyone fits into life differently. Understanding their perspectives, understanding their pain points, understanding even why they think the way they do, the culture, the background, everything in between ties back to the way they live life, the way they show up, the way they make decisions. Everything comes back to the core of what makes a person a person. Until you talk to them, until you uncover that, it's always going to be a drift that keeps happening. It's going to be assumptions. It's going to be a case of, I think I understand. It's always going to be a feel of, oh, that person doesn't really like me. Oh, it's going to be a piece of, it's like a competition. But leaders are humans. I'm not saying that it's going to be like one of the odd ones out. That's fine. But overall, everyone wants to be seen. Everyone wants to be heard. I want to say thank you so much for this great list for being here. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe we've actually just done it. Priya, thank you so much. You know, you took time to be here today. We know we need to bring you back. Derek, you owe us like a double or triple deep of this because you were meant to be here last week, but you were here today. Thank you so much for showing up. But Priya, I want people to know how can they connect with you? We've got so many people who want to know. Priya is awesome, right? How can they connect with you and how can they learn more about what you do as well? Yeah, so as you said, LinkedIn, that's the best way to do, of course, not with Crystal, no, no, but <laughs> send me a LinkedIn connect, and yeah, and we'll be connected. You will know what I'm doing, and I will know what you're doing, and, and hopefully it will be a good collaboration. Fantastic. And Derek, how can people find you? Yeah, absolutely. LinkedIn is great. Please reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can also reach me at Derek, D-E-R-I-C-K, at ttrexecutivecoaching.com and the ttr stands for timely topical and relevant which was what this was Fola. you really made this wonderful so thank you so much for having me not a problem it was a great pleasure to have you and as you know i am just your hold i'm just a servant just holding the mic to make things happen if anyone wants to reach me for sure you can connect with me on linkedin i want to hear more i want to talk to you but above all you can see everything that i do on folaalibi.com and we can dive into deeper things and explore things in greater detail i want to say thank you so much to everyone who actually joined who listened who left a comment who even even didn't say hello that's okay i love you as well either way for showing up and be i can see all the numbers going up on the screen right here i want to say thank you but overall i want you to take this away remember that you are your life's project manager and you are the most important product you can actually ever walk on. But the key thing to create the life you've actually craved, <laughs> it takes action. Take action today and execute. Take the action today to communicate. Take action today to assess, have that tactical plan. Derek has said it, go in and find out how, what, am I, what have I been doing wrong? Look inwards because everything starts with us, me, the me project before pointing fingers, looking at what's and say, what have I been doing? How have I shown up? How have I seemed as though that I was maybe a little bit difficult? Remember your role is to make your boss look good. I cannot wait to hear how you're going to be applying this session. I want to hear your feedback in the comments. Share this when you get a great idea, make sure you share that because someone else needs to benefit. Remember same time next week, we're going to have a fantastic show. I have an awesome guest. You don't even want to know. He's going to blow your socks off, but stay safe. And remember, keep it down to the real. Have a good one.